Hi, I'm Dr. Adam Thiemann of the Annex Labs at bar -Ilan University. And now we're going to continue our Digital on Top um, Physical Verification lecture, and we're at part four, which is extracting the LVS Ready Layout Netlist. So in the previous parts of the lecture, we started with an introduction to the basic flow. We showed how we got our Verilog netlist out of our place and route tool and ran V2LVS. So right now we have a source netlist that is completely ready. But now we have to get the other side, which is the layout netlist, and that's through extraction. So our source netlist is ready, and we need to prepare the layout netlist. And what we're going to do is we're going to stream out from Inovus. So we're going to export the layout from Inovus, and that's called stream out. So GDS is a, a stream type of format, so the uh, operation is called stream out. And the, the, the command that's used in Inovus stylus is called write stream. So we're going to give the name of our layout, mylayout.gds. That's the GDS file that's going to come out. Uh, we're going to use this merge, which I'm going to discuss in a second. And we're going to use a map file, which I'm going to discuss in a second also. There's a thing called uh, units, which is the precision. And just leave it at 1,000, but you can also change it if you need to. So a few um, options to know about here. As we mentioned before, this is our layout. And when we write stream, it will write out everything that we have inside our top level layout. But a lot of the things are, um, are kind of abstracted away inside different blocks inside, if it's standard cells or all kinds of other uh, IPs that were provided to us. So if we want to have uh, one coherent GDS file that has everything rather than having separate files for each one that we have to deal with afterwards, what we can do is merge them. So this minus merge type of a command, and we give it a list of all the GDS files of all these abstracts inside, we'll create one GDS file that has our entire design inside, and that's really a, a much easier way to do it. Okay, another type of uh, thing that I want to mention is that we can here um, use this uh, setdb command to add a prefix or a suffix to the names of our, our cells, and we'll see that later again to make sure we don't have these duplicate type of things uh, similar to what we saw in the previous lecture on the CDL. Um, and another thing is the text size. So you, you're going to actually look at the layout often um, to see all kinds of uh, bugs and all kinds of problems that we have. So um, it really helps uh, if we can see the different texts and labels that were put in by the layout designer. If you have a text size that's too small, you won't see them or you only see them in a really um, low, uh, uh, low level type of a zoom. And uh, if they're too big, they're going to just fall on top of each other and be incoherent. So you can play with this text size to get the, the sizes of the text that are written out in the layout to be um, something that can help us debug. So that was pretty straightforward. Um, one thing that I mentioned uh, before is that there's this mapping file. And what is a mapping file? So there are various types of GDS map files in EDA tools. That's really confusing. Yes, it's really confusing. But they basically, all they do is they translate a layer name um, to its use in, and layer number. So um, basically, um, these different map files, they're a list of the, the name in one tool and the GDS number. Uh, GDS uses a, a number for a layer. It doesn't use a name inside the GDS and so forth. Um, there's also something called a type or, or usage of these things. So the stream out map file that's used by both Inovus and Virtuoso, it's a simple table. So the first column over here is the layer name, for example, metal one. Then the second one is, is, is the uh, type. So is it a drawing layer? Is it a pin layer in there? a lot of other types of layers that can be defined inside a GDS, um, the number of the layer inside, uh, inside the GDS, and the data type layer. So often these will be referred to as 15 colon 0 and 15 colon 32. But other tools may have different um, types of uh, layer numbers. We'll see later that Caliber uses just one number to describe both the layer number and data type and maps it to um, metal one drawing or metal one pin, etc. Okay, so that's the map file. It should be provided by your foundry, but sometimes we actually have to make it by, by hand. Um, something that can, that just a little tip here, that can help us kind of debug and find um, our mapping file uh, numbers, our, our GDS numbers. In Virtuoso, you can uh, actually go inside the layer selection window in the, the layout tool. And if you right click over here on this uh, uh, layer um, header over here, it will open up this form. And on this form, you can select columns. And one of the options, there are many options that are worth looking at, but one of the options is GDS number. And if you um, if you click on that, then the GDS number will appear as one of the columns inside um, the layer selection window. And that will help you find what the uh, layer number and data type are of a certain, of a certain uh, layer that you want to uh, use for something that's in the LVS process or, or otherwise. So that was just a kind of a tip on the side. 
Okay, I'm going to take a step aside now from extraction and go back into the other side. How about streaming in a file, not just streaming out a file? So we streamed out our file from Inovus, and that was okay, but we often are going to need to use um, uh, uh, the file in, a, in the, the GDS file of something, not necessarily the top level, but the top level as well, in, in our layout um, editor or layout viewer. So um, usually the, we can't look at a GDS file, it's a, a binary file, and we're used to using a layout editor such as Virtuoso Layout um, for editing and for viewing our different GDS and we, uh, our different layouts. And so we, we're going to need to stream in for that. So I'm just going to show you for a second how the streaming in um, process works. So again, streaming out from Inovus isn't enough. What if we want to visually debug LVS or manually fix DRCs? Often, by the way, our last step before um, going to tape out is taking those small DRCs, a little spacing error in Metal 2 or something like that, or some sort of a uh, via overlap or something, and we'll just manually fix them um, because they were left over for some reason by the place and route tool. Okay. So we'll use the same mapping file that we used to stream into to, uh, to stream out from Inovus. We'll use it to stream into Virtuoso, and the command is called strm in in the Cadence uh, um, environment. So stream in um, the top cell. We give it the name of the top cell in the, in our file. Our design name the library that's the library in virtuoso that's going to be created or going to be uh, used to uh, stream this in the view is going to be a layout view that's what we're going to call the view name in virtuoso attach tech file of lib we're going to give it the name of the tech file that we should uh, attach the layer map that's the path to the layer map that we used uh, there for streaming out and the stream file is the actual gds file that we want to stream in so once we run that we're going to actually be able to uh, open up and see our our um, cell as one of the options inside our layout viewer. Okay, we can also do it with the with the GUI in Virtuoso. We go file import stream from the command uh, inform, uh, information window, the CIW, and it opens this X stream in form. And all of the options that we showed here are shown inside the uh, map here. Okay, going back to um, to our uh, regular flow. Now we have our GDS file that we streamed out from Inovus, and we want to extract it. So um, how do we do that? And that's going to create our layout net list. So we're going to use Caliber, and Caliber is a tool for mental graphics, uh, which is uh, used for physical verification. And one thing it can do, it can extract the connectivity and the devices from the GDS file and create a SPICE net list of them. So Caliber uh, with all kinds of options to make it faster. And then we just give it um, the name of the netlist that should come out. So minus spice, my layout netlist.sp. That's going to be the name of the layout netlist. And we give it a path to the run set. Okay. Um, a run set is what is used by all of the caliber tools, as we'll be seeing from now on in this lecture uh, several times. And uh, we use a special run set for each one of them. What is a run set? It's uh, something in the SVRF language that has a lot of uh, commands. It's provided by, uh, uh, I mean, well, the run set is something that usually calls the rule file, which is provided by our foundry and tells us how to actually um, identify different layers and different connectivity and different devices and so forth. The run set just sits on top of it. It's like a wrapper that gives it some information that we can tweak and uh, configure these types of things. So what is uh, inside the run set file? First and foremost, it has to tell us where the GDS file is. So there are these commands, layout path, layout primary, and layout system. So layout path, we can actually give it a, a nice uh, variable here. So my GDS, whatever that is, uh, the uh, layout primary, that's the top level inside our GDS and the system GDS. It can also take uh, files such as Oasis, but GDS is the industry standard that's usually used for a stream file. Okay, so that's going to be inside our run set file. And now we'll discuss some things that can happen during extraction. And uh, we need to change things in our run set file. So problem number one, again, similar to what we had in the um, in the source layout in the source uh, netlist flow, we may have duplicates. So duplicate instances in the GDS file. So the issue is that merge GDS files have the same uh, cells uh, uh, as named with other cells. Okay, so for digital blocks, it's actually pretty easy to fix this. We saw before that there's a DB option inside the Inovus. Uh, if we do set DB, write stream cell name prefix and give a prefix such as my block, it will add this prefix to uh, each and every structure inside the GDS, and um, then we shouldn't have any duplicates. For custom blocks, um, 
we can actually do this inside the, the stream out uh, option. So when we provide the GDS file from uh, Virtuoso, we open a uh, file uh, export stream and this X stream out um, tool opens. There's an options button there and that opens this uh, more options. And if we go to cell mapping over here, you can see that there's either cell uh, name prefix or cell name suffix. We can add some sort of a prefix or a suffix to each one of the blocks inside. Um, but make sure you also uh, click this which says ignore cell name prefix and suffix for top cell or else the top cell name changes and then uh, it won't be recognized um, by the it'll have a different name than what we we expected okay so make sure you check that one too so um, the analog or custom block designers when they export their gds they should uh, select these options and then that will help us uh, not have duplicate instances Problem number two we have. Again, we're going back to this problem with bus notation. So custom cell buses use triangular brackets, which are streamed out uh, in the GDS. So the solution number one is in the same type of uh, stream out. There's another button here that says general, and under it says replace uh, triangular brackets with square brackets. And doing that, we'll have square brackets in the, uh, in the layout, and that's good. Okay, but if we, again, didn't, if we didn't check that when if our IP provider or whoever didn't uh, check that and we gave us triangular brackets, and as I said, the tool doesn't like those types of things. What we have to do is we have to rename them. We can't go into the actual binary of the GDS2 file and do it, but in the run set file of the extraction uh, of the extraction tool in Calibre, we can write layout, rename text, and give all kinds of um, uh, regular expressions here. So, for example, we can find all the uh, triangular brackets like this and turn them into square brackets, and triangular brackets like this, turn them into square brackets, hoping that there aren't any texts that use these in some other way, which there shouldn't be. Okay, so that will also solve the problem. Problem number three, missing ports. Okay, sometimes you're missing a label in your GDS. Okay, um, we'll see in a, in a little bit that the main thing that we have to have is the ports. The ports have to be correctly named and uh, or else we can't even start our, our GDS. We'll have a port mismatch in the GDS report. And the way that at least Calibre recognizes that we have a port is we have a label on a certain metal layer that's defined for as a port layer, for example, metal three pin or something like that. And if we have a label there, that's where it, it recognizes a port. Well, what have, if we have a missing port? Okay, so and there are different reasons that we might have a missing port. Um, solution number one is to add it in Inovis. It's not that easy, but it's a better solution. So we can add a label in Inovis, and then it will be um, streamed out inside the GDS. Okay, solution number two is we can do it kind of manually in the extraction run set file using the layout text command. So layout text, and I gave here um, two examples that I had to use in an IO file. Um, and you give the coordinates over here. So this is a coordinate inside the GDS, and this is the layer number. Now, this layer number, as you can see, is very different from the layout number, uh, the, the layer number that we saw inside the, um, in, inside the uh, layer map file. So you have to kind of figure out what these layer numbers are by some reverse engineering, um, looking into the different, uh, looking from the GDS file number and looking through the rule file of the extraction tool but you can find them in the end. Problem number four, multiple labels. Okay, so multiple labels of the same name appear on the layout. This is a, a problem, okay? So it's often done by custom block designers. You'll write VDD on every rail inside a uh, type of a play, uh, inside of a type of a design. For example, just um, I'll show you what I mean. Let's say we make a bunch of rows over here and we write VDD, GND, VDD, GND. So now what we have here is uh, two labels of VDD and two labels of ground, but there's no connection between them because we're assuming, say, that some sort of a, a, a higher level is going to actually, uh, well, I didn't do that too well, uh, but the, the higher level is going to put some sort of a stripe that's going to connect the two GNDs and two VDDs, but I don't want to do it at this level. And I want this to pass LVS, but this is going to be a stamping conflict. So we have VDD on, this, on two different nets. We have GDD on two different nets. It's going to say, listen, you're shorting two different nets by putting a name on them. That's called a stamping conflict. Um, it assumes often that this is okay. Uh, in some way or another to continue LVS, and it will say, aha, I found this VDD, 
and I found this VDD, and they both say VDD. That's a stamping conflict. Mm, I'll just take this one. Now, they happen to be the same name, and it should be okay, but it uh, provides this ugly warning, and it, uh, it's not nice. Um, but it could be even worse because there may be actual shorts between the two of them or something like that, which is a real stamping conflict, and that won't be good because then everybody everything will be called VDD, and that's a real problem. So this type of a stamping conflict uh, will appear in the log file, and we'll see that in a, in a little while. Okay, so the solution is to use uh, uh, for for this type of a thing is to use these options inside the run set file virtual connect colon or virtual connect name. Virtual connect colon is a is a kind of a standard practice that, that it's often used. We'd write VDD colon and VDD colon, um, and that means we really do know that this and this should be virtually connected. And so take everything with a colon and connect it together. That's fine. Um, it should not be done at our top level, but on a, on a lower level, it's fine to do. Um, a more dangerous thing is virtual connect name um, question mark. Uh, that will connect anything with the same name. So VDD and VDD will be connected. GND and GDD, GND will be connected. But what if we have a real mistake here? Um, that's not a very good thing to do. Okay, uh, But it is an option that we should know about that you can put inside the run set file. Problem number five, special power names. Okay, the, the issue is that you have a non-standard name, not VDD, VSS, GND that tap your bulks. Okay, Caliber will warn you that the bulk is not connected to the power on the ground. It usually won't come out in error because it'll figure that you probably that it's probably okay. But you should really update the names of the power and names of the ground inside uh, Caliber. They usually have some sort of a default that's given in the rule set file. But if we do LVS power name and give a list of uh, the, the names of the powers and LVS ground names and a list of the ground, it will be okay. It will assume that these uh, can be bulk connections and will accept it and not give any type of warning. And it will come out good in the ERC check. Problem number six, blocks that aren't ready. Well, you're going to want to um, set up and debug LVS really early, as early as possible, because it may take a long time and uh, we don't, and this gates our tape out. So we want to really start setting up LVS early, find out all kinds of problem, potential problems that we might have, but not our, all our IPs are ready. Okay. And so if we try to extract and we don't have all of the GDS files, they weren't all merged in, then uh, we're going to have an error and we can't continue. Well, there is a workaround. We can um, put this line inside our um, inside our, our, our run file. Layout input exception severity missing reference one will mean that it will reduce the missing reference to a warning, and then um, it will continue to run. It of course cannot pass LVS because you're not going to have a, a certain block inside. Um, but it, at least it will run extraction. We can see all kinds of different types of uh, ERC problems and so forth. And we can use exclude filter or box to try and get around this problem uh, later. And I'll show that in, a, uh, in the next uh, part of the lecture. OK, now problem number seven is adding additional structures. So you often need to add additional physical structures to the final GDS, such as logo, seal ring, dummy fill, etc. Okay, so solution number one, and this is the preferred solution, create a left for your physical uh, structure and add it in your place and route tool so it's already merged into the final GDS in the right place and you don't have to do this manually or with any type of a scripting. But that is often not uh, a possibility. So solution number two is to merge the GDS of the physical tr structure with the top level GDS and Caliber provides a tool that's called DRV which can do these file merges and I'll discuss it uh, more in depth uh, in the next part of the lecture. So now I'll give you a short demo of the things we talked about in this section. Um, we'll start with streaming out a um, GDS file from Inova. So we're here in the Inova shell, and we do write stream, give it the name of the GDS file. We can put a .gz and it will um, compress it. Merge, we have a, um, a, a list here of all the GDS files. Um, we have the tech file over here and the precision. So we uh, just run that, and um, it will do everything it's supposed to do runs for a little while telling us all kinds of things it's always very important to go over the different warnings and the different things it says here there are a lot of uh, files to merge in here so it's reading all of them and doing what it's supposed to do and finally stream out is finished so once stream out is finished um, essentially uh, we have a, um, uh, a GDS file Okay, at the GDS file, we can't look at it, uh, but one thing we can do is we can um, import it into a, vir a Virtuoso. And so we streamed it in and we um, have a library here called Leo1Top, and Leo1Top has a whole bunch of different things in it. One of them is Leo1Top, and so we can open the layout 
and um, I'll double click on the layout and we see that we have the top level over here with all of the different layers inside uh, of uh, our chip um, so that is going to be important in case we want to run caliber from uh, from inside the layout and if we want to debug and maybe fix some of the things okay um, so now that we have uh, our uh, GDS file and we have also streamed it into Inovus uh, for when we want to um, do things with it we can go on and um, look at uh, the extraction so for the extraction as we mentioned before we um, actually need to uh, we need to have an extraction run file so this is the extraction run file and um, as we see it has layout path and layout uh, primary the top level name that it's a GDS2 file uh, okay then uh, if we had some empty GDS's remember we discussed this layout input ex exception severity reference one here's a block that we had that wasn't ready for a while so we did that we also could exclude it with layout spice exclude cell LVS spice exclude cell source uh, LVS spice cell layout uh, exclude cell layout um, we can box it we can filter it so those are the different options of getting rid of it um, we'll also have those inside the uh, run set of the comparison um, remember, if we wanted to do uh, extraction comparison in one, well, um, we would just add uh, also uh, the path of um, the path of the source netlist. Okay. Um, other things that we can do here is we can add labels. So layout text, give a name of a text, give a coordinates, and the uh, the the layer we want to write it into. Um, another text that we're adding here we're going to rename text we're going to get rid of all the colons that we may have used for um, virtual connections in for some reason and uh, we also have uh, the replacement of triangular to square brackets if we do it inside uh, caliber we have the names of the power and the names of the ground nets for uh, bulk connectivity and all kinds of other options here until we finally source the um, rule file from the PDK Okay, um, so that is our extraction file, and then we can go and actually run the extraction. So we do caliber with all the options over here. We say what the spice um, netlist that we want to export is going to be called Leo, Leo1 top layout.spice, the hcells file that we prepared, and um, we look at the caliber extract. And uh, so we can run this, and that's going to take a while and run and, uh, and do its thing. So we can just wait a few seconds until then. So in the meantime, while this runs, I'm just going to show you um, what I discussed about when exporting um, our, our, when writing our stream out. If we do file export stream, okay, um, we can choose our stream file and our layer map and so forth. But if we go to more options, in cell mapping, we have this uh, uh, option to add a prefix or add a suffix. And there, there we can make sure that we have a unique name inside um, the, the GDS that comes out. And we also have this option, ignore cell name prefix and suffix for top cell. And it's very important to click that or else your top cell name will change and then the tools won't actually recognize it. Under the general tab, we have replace um, triangular brackets with square brackets that also should be used. So we got to the end, we see that extraction was run, and what we should have now is um, inside our uh, design, we should have a uh, Leo1 top layout.sp, and we see that we get an extracted netlist. Let's go and find the subcircuit um, of Leo1 top, and here we get Leo1 top, and we get everything inside it, and uh, we hope, hopefully are good to go now on, on that part. Um, well, what we should do, though, is we should look at the log file. So um, this extraction log uh, is our log file. And we can look for things such as uh, warnings and errors. So um, if we look for warnings, there will be different things inside. And um, uh, there might be all kinds of warnings that are important for us over here. Um, which, uh, for example, so we have these extraction errors and warnings. It says the same name on... Uh, different nets and uh, and other things like that um, so we better check out what these are and try to fix them some of them as I said will be on uh, uh, lower level uh, blocks that we got from a vendor and then uh, we might be able to wave them away um, we see that in the top level we have this uh, stamping conflict and S-Connect multiple sources stamp one target net and we have uh, these two nets are actually 
um, really uh, connected to each other in the design. They're uh, shorted together, and that's why we're getting this error, so uh, this warning. But it is a real problem, and it says that even though these two nets are connected to VSS, it's going to choose VSS and assume that all of them are VSS. And if LVS passes, it means that um, it actually erased these nets and just connected VSS. So LVS could pass despite this, but it's something that we have to check out. And in this case, I actually know what it is. Okay, um, uh, another thing is that we have the uh, uh, ERC results are stored inside this SVDB um, uh, file. Uh, and so what we can do is we can just run caliber uh, minus RVE SVDB and it will open the results data the results database of, uh, of this uh, part here of the extraction and we see that the extraction results not good we have uh, yellow that means there are problems and all these these are um, provided by uh, vendors so it's not something we care about exactly or at least I know now these are the warnings we saw before which I know what they are they're these different stamping conflicts and there are also problems here in the soft check database um, which you can click on uh, there's no VSS uh, net VSS selected for stamping here and it has uh, different problems that could be here and we can highlight them inside um, our design okay and uh, here too we have to go through these and see what they are um, right now I'm not going to go into them there are different things that we had to, to look at before but some of them are known inside analog blocks so that's basically what we did for extraction and now we can go on to the next part where we're actually going to compare and run uh, LVS for comparison.